Hi everyone, this is Frank DeMar with The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth, and I hope that this time my voice is synced with the picture, and if it isn't, well, just bear with it. Uh, I'll only be a couple seconds behind or in front. Just think it is this as a Godzilla movie from China. <laughs> so let me get right into the news, if you will. Today is December the 4th of 2013, and this is where I connect the dots between Bible prophecy and current events. And if you just find my YouTube channel, I'd like to invite you to come to my website, www.endtimesresearchministry. And when you're there, just scroll down, you'll see the front page, you scroll down, and you'll see the link for my book in blue right there. And then if you miss it, just follow the little hand pointing to the book, December 2nd, 2013. Now, you're not going to find another book this current on the marketplace, I can guarantee that. Because I keep my book as current as possible within days of events taking place. And uh, what I am doing is making sure that I'm putting down the specific information, not just throwing anything in the book for you to read it. Very, very specific information that shows how prophecy is being fulfilled. So in the beginning right here, as you see on this page now, you'll see the headline that the Middle East peace talks begin. And what I'm doing is just giving you a little bit of background. Back in... August 14th of 2013, that's when the United States got involved again with the Middle East peace talks. Barack Obama was trying to get a peace agreement established. It hasn't worked. It hasn't worked ever since Jimmy Carter uh, managed to get Mahakam Begin and Anwar Sadat together to get that peace a treaty signed. And that was in 1979, and we know now with the Egypt, with the new government, the way it was under Marcy, everything went to hell of in the handbasket with that. And the peace process and the peace agreement that they had in Egypt is gone astray. And there is no real peace uh, now in Israel or even in the Palestinian controlled area and this is why John Kerry is over there under the guise of the uh, uh, Barack Obama. So it started on the 14th of August and it was supposed to run a period of nine months. Well the period of nine months ends in April and it just so happens that April is one of the first of the four blood moons that will be showing up in 2014 and 2015. So why am I telling you all this? Well, because the call for peace and safety is very, very important about uh, what we should look for in the last days. And Christ told us that in the last days when they're calling for peace and safety, that would be a time that we know that the sudden destruction is coming. So what I did here is give you a little bit of background to give you the links to show you when it started, the peace talk started. Kerry was over there. You'll see the nine-month period time, the goal to meet the peace talks, which they're not going to meet. But there's a lot of significance in what's going on. And I have a video there that you can play that shows the beginning of this peace process. Again, just fillers for background, if you will. Now here is the scripture because these scriptures are very, very important when you're connecting the dots between prophecy and current events. And I did mention that 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, is travailed upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So we know that there is destruction that's coming while Israel is calling for peace and safety. We see the breakdown continue the stalled peace talks continue between the PLO and Israel and the rest of the Arab com com countries if you will now I want to also tie in what God showed Daniel and here you see in Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 through 27 and you're going to understand why this is important because we're dealing with the Antichrist here it says after and after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The prince that we should come, obviously, in reference to the Antichrist. 
Now we know that Rome came in. Let me and uh, destroyed the second temple that was built right there in the Temple Mount. That's where we had the the Jewish second temple in Rome. Uh, wrecked it. They took it down and it was a fulfillment of one of the prophecies Jesus gave to us in the New Testament where he said not one stone would rest upon another. So going on it says, well let me back up a little bit, and the people of the prince, now who were the people of the prince? They were Romans. The Romans went in there under Titus and did this, destroyed the temple. So the people of the prince shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and into the end of war, desolations are determined. And now we're talking about the Antichrist, and he jumps to the future, and he shall confirm a covenant. It doesn't say he is going to make a covenant, some kind of peace agreement, but that when the man of sin comes, when the Antichrist comes, it will be this man who will confirm a covenant. In other words, there was an agreement that was already in place and he's going to confirm it. That's what it surely looks like. And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, and that's a period of seven years. And in the midst of the week, or exactly three and a half years, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation, and that the determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So, a covenant will be confirmed. Who's going to do it? Antichrist will confirm it. When is he going to do this covenant? Well, obviously, in the beginning of the seven-year tribulation, because if it talks about being one week, and one week in the prophecy equals seven years, then exactly... Uh, three and a half years after he makes this covenant or confirms the covenant, he's going to break it and stop the sacrifices that obviously that the Jews are going to start up again. And by the way, go to my uh, site if you're here at my YouTube channel and look at my video that I made yesterday, December the 3rd, that talks about the Antichrist and about the third temple that's going to be rebuilt and how they, they're getting ready right now. Uh, to have these sacrifices. They're already practicing these sacrifices. So these things are moving in the direction that the Lord told us that we would be going. It's very exciting times, especially if you're a Christian. And I'm hoping that if you're not Christian, at least you'll start to observe what's going on around you as the news comes in. And hopefully when I give you these scriptures, you either keep the videos or you'll remember or maybe you'll write them down, whatever you're going to do. But I know that the Holy Spirit is the type of, of uh, gracious God that when it come times, you will remember these things. We know from uh, Isaiah 55, 11. All right, so this is what it says in Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So if you think uh, that you're not getting anything out of here, you better at least remember or believe that God is going to, at the proper time, at the right time, He's going to use his word to do what he wants in it, that the person that is getting it. So I'm pretty confident that now that you've seen this, you're going to understand it sooner or later. If you don't believe it now, I'm sure it will come up. Now, why is all this important? Well, tying in together that Israel is in a lot of problems right now. They're becoming isolated. And this is also part of prophecy. We see this right here. In Zechariah 12:3, and in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people, and all that burden themselves with it shall be cut into pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. So there you go. The Lord tells us that everyone is going to be coming against Israel. It's no brainer. You know it when it says all the people. That's what he means. It means everybody, including the United States. So looking to the left here, you'll see a figure because we were already talking about Rome, how Titus went in and he destroyed 
the temple, the third temple, how Rome was obviously in control of what was going on in the region, in control of Israel. And we know from scripture that in the last days, this Roman Empire will relive. It's going to be a revived Roman Empire in the last days. And we see that it's already here. Now, the last phase of the Roman Empire will be 10 kings that will be giving all their authority over to this Antichrist man who will, no doubt, through the confirming of the covenant, allow the Jews to rebuild their temple. The beginning of the seven-year tribulation. And then all hell will break loose exactly 1,260 days after that covenant is confirmed by the Antichrist. 1,260 days after he confirms it, he will break his covenant, break this conf confirmation of the covenant, covenant, and he will go into the temple that will be sitting there in the Temple Mount. And he's going to tell everybody in the world that he's God. Now, this is going to be bad not only for the Jews, it's going to be bad for anybody who is alive who rejected the Messiah. And we know that prior to this, or just immediately after when the, when the Antichrist is revealed, the church is going to be taken out because the wrath of God will begin to be poured out in three and a half years. So let me back up just so that you, you understand this completely. A covenant will be confirmed at the beginning of the seven-year tribulation. It's a period of seven years. Okay. Now, in the middle of that covenant, this is when the Antichrist breaks the covenant. So exactly one middle section of this. Two sections. Let's break it down. The first section, 1,260 days. After the 1,260 days, Antichrist goes into the temple. So you've got one half left, right? So it's very easy for you. If you do not receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, it's going to be very, very easy for you. Because when you see this man of sin go into the temple and claim that he is God and stop the sacrifices, all you have to do at that point is to get out a calendar, break out a calendar, and start crossing the days off on that calendar. Because exactly 1,260 days later, Jesus Christ will be coming back to earth. Now, we can't tell you exactly the date because we don't know when the covenant is going to be confirmed. But we do know for sure that when it is confirmed, since the Lord told us 1,260 days, I mean, very, very evident, then start crossing the days off, and that's when the Lord will come back. So, if you really want to know exactly when the Lord will be coming back, I guess just keep rejecting Jesus. That's not going to be very, very wise on your part. But if you do that, you'll know exactly when, Maybe, and the reason why I said maybe is because only very, very few people are going to be left alive during the tribulation period. And Christ even said, unless uh, he cut the day short, no one would live. So we know that that seven-year period of time, the tribulation period, especially the last three and a half years, which is called Jacob's trouble, by the way, those periods of uh, days... When the plagues, the, the bowls, and the vials are being poured out, God's judgment, millions and millions, billions of people are going to be killed on the face of this earth. So you don't want to hang around just to find out when the Lord is going to be coming back. That would be the hard way. So knowing that Rome is involved, Rome was established when Jesus Christ came the first time, it will be established again. Israel is already having problems. They're calling for peace and safety. They're being isolated. All of these prophecies are taking place now. So let me get into the news and let me show you how I connect the dots here. The EU malls steps if Middle peace fails or peace fails. So as I said, uh, the Lord showed us when they're calling for peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. Now, the European Union, by the way, is a revived Roman Empire. 
This is why it's important. The European Union is made up of 27 different nations that used to be in the old Roman Empire. The same nations. So we know that the revived Roman Empire is already standing. Now it hasn't filtered down to the ten kings yet. But as you watch the news being broadcast out of the European Union, they're having just as many problems in, with their economy as the United States is having. And they've been talking about and threatening some of the nations to pull away. So we know from Daniel, uh, Daniel chapter 2, verses 41 through 43, that this entity is not going to hold together. It's not going to cleave together. So eventually, down the line, you're going to have 10 leaders or 10 kings of nations within the European Union probably get together and hand all over the power to the Antichrist. So we do know from Daniel and the book of Revelation Ten kings are going to be uh, very, very uh, influential in the last days when it comes to this revived Roman Empire. So, when we see news about Israel and the European Union, or if you will, the revived Roman Empire, put your antennas up and pay attention because we know that the Antichrist is coming, sh coming soon. And what is he going to do? <laughs> He's going to confirm a covenant. So let's see what it says here. What I did it was a really long article, and I just put up some of the, the highlights for you. It says, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the predecessor, Harud Omar, battled over Israel's Iran's policy Sunday, with Omar slamming Netanyahu for waging war against the U.S. administration and Netanyahu responding that he would speak out loudly when Israel's security is at stake. So you're talking peace and what? The whole article talks about peace and security. Isn't this exactly what we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3? You better believe it. It's happening now in the Middle East. It's happening with the very countries that the Lord said was going to happen. And this isn't by coincidence, it was by uh, design as, the, as our Lord who was able to see the future, wrote it down for us, he told us what to look for, and you would be advised to pay attention to the King of Kings. It goes on to say, as opposed to others, when I see that interest vital to the security, here we go again, the security of Israel's citizens are in danger, I will not be quiet. Netanyahu said, look where he is at, he's in Rome. Now, what I'm going to just stop there for a second because Rome is very important. How important is it? Well, in the Bible, in Revelation, take a look at this. Let me pull this out here for a second and just take, take a second, especially if you don't know anything about the book of Revelation. If you haven't done a study on it, you really need to get a, get a study going because... The book will bless you. There is a, a promise in this book that anybody reads it or even hears it will be blessed. And I'm pretty sure that you, you're going to want it by getting a blessing. Now look at this in Revelation chapter 17. It says this. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me saying unto me, Come hither and I will show you the, the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now all this is explained. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And so he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness and I saw a woman upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. Now remember Daniel talked about the ten kings and so Jesus also, as I said before, talks in reference to these ten horns, which is symbolic for the kings. Then the woman, which was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her head was the name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And who is this woman? 
Well, obviously, we know that it is, it is the Roman Catholic Church, the woman. Where is this woman? It is a, a false religion that rides along with the Antichrist, who will be riding on the beast. It's the harlot who joins forces with the Antichrist in the last days. Now, the description of the purple and the scarlet and the deck with gold, the gold and the precious stones, if you ever want to see a, a picture of this, just Google the Pope and his masses or the Catholic masses because you'll see everything in there in the book of Revelation is describing the Pope's colors, the gold, the precious stones that they wear in his hat. And not only that, but he is in... He is in uh, the city with the seven hills. Now, I want to take a look at this. We're going to drop down here into verse 9, and it says this. And here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the women live. Now, where's the seven mountains? Well, just go to your travel agency and ask to uh, get a plane ticket to the city with the seven mountains. And you're going to get out of the plain and you'll be in Italy, Rome, Italy. And it says, and there are seven kings, five have fallen. We're going to keep going on because in verse 18, it tells you where the woman is. Look at this in verse 18 of Revelation chapter 17. And the woman which thou sought is the great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So this harlot, this, this connection to the mother of harlots of abominations, the city. It's a city. Where is that city? It's Rome. This city with the seven hills or the seven mountains. The city of where the woman sits. The city of the purple and the scarlet and the colors and the gold and the, and the precious stones. That's the Roman Catholic Church. It's very, very easy to see. God told us very, very plainly, it's the city. It's not America. It's not the United States. It's not New York City. It's Rome, the city with the seven hills. And so, why am I showing you this? Well, I'm showing you this article here because they are in Rome again. And we know that since the Bible tells us that there is going to be a confirmation from the Antichrist who comes from Rome, any news that comes out of Rome that deals with Israel or and the European Union, man, pay attention to it. Now look at the highlighted area, because this goes hand in hand now. We've already talked about security. We've talked about the peace and security. We talked about the Roman Empire. Israel's in Rome. And eventually what's going to happen, the Roman, somebody from this empire, anywhere out of this Roman Empire will confirm a covenant. And so during this time, we know that there's contention uh, from Israel and the rest of the world, breaking down all the people coming against Israel. And that includes the United States of America. I've been warning people for years, watch what happens with the United States and the friendship with Israel. It's going to decline. It's going to disintegrate. And we're on the road to seeing that happen. Now, in this article, it says this. We waged war on American and the American administration. You cannot blur it. We waged war, he said. They were always on our side, he added, emphatically banging the podium. This was the uh, previous prime minister. And this they're talking about this. Right here, Omar. He was saying this because he doesn't like what Benjamin Netanyahu is doing. But the fact of the matter remains. There's tension now between America and Israel. And Israel is being over and over again stabbed in the back. Over and over again. So you'll see that there's some other information here. The article is a really good article. You should read that article. I have the link at my site. Take a look at this. Now, this is, again, in the yellow. This is what Benjamin Netanyahu is saying. But at the same time, I will tell you and promise you in the spirit of the Maccabees, we will not allow Iran to receive a military nuclear capability. 
right? So in other words, Israel's leader is telling them, no matter what happens, whatever deal the United States made or the rest of those powerful countries that were in Geneva last week, Israel is not going to abide by it. And when it comes down to it, Israel is going to what? Obviously, they're going to have to attack. That's what he is saying here. Now, it says, on the issues of touching Israel's security, it's fitting to present a common front and not to turn it into unnecessary political battle, he said. Iran, meanwhile, is expected to be a major focus of Netanyahu's talks in Rome on Monday with the Italian counterpart Enrico Lara. And the two will be meeting or meet following a morning meeting Netanyahu has scheduled with Pope Francis. All right, so what's so important about this? Well, they're in Rome. They're talking about peace. They're talking about security. And Pope Francis is not just a, the head of the Roman Catholic Church, but a lot of people don't understand that the Vatican's its own country. It is a country, and the Pope is the head of the country. So they're sitting down with one leader of one country talking about peace and security and about Iran and making a peace agreement up with the Palestinians with Rome. And so now you know why the Roman uh, information in the Old Testament is very, very important because as we get closer and closer, if we see that the, the Roman entities in Rome, the Vatican, the world leaders in Rome come together and they form this peace agreement, you'll know once it's confirmed, you'll know that the seven-year tribulation has begun. Now, let me go to God's curse because we're getting in dealing again with the nation of Israel. Very, very important. And a lot of people may not know, know this, but in my book, you'll see there is a, uh, a chapter on God's curse in my book. And what I've done is outline every event that I could come across that shows you when a, when a leader of the country said something about Israel or went against Israel or cursed Israel, what happened to those countries? Natural disasters just come on a week before, on the very day, and many of the cases on the very day or just after when somebody cursed Israel or tried to divide up Israel or burden themselves over Jerusalem, as you're going to see all these scriptures here. So uh, what I wanted to do is bring you another uh, connection, be, uh, another one other than what I gave to you yesterday. Now yesterday in my video on December the 3rd, 2013, I talked about uh, one of those other events where a nation was cursed. So please go and watch that video. I don't have time to go and share it all here right now. But for those of you who don't know the scriptures, look at Joel chapter 3 verse 2 because in Joel 3.2, this is where we see that anybody who tries to divide up the nation of Israel will be destroyed. They're, they're led down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and this is where the destruction comes. Now, in Genesis, we know that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 3, that anybody who curses Israel will be cursed. All right, so that is two. And the third one we've already covered in Zechariah 12.3. Zechariah 12.3 tells us about dealing with Jerusalem. Anybody who burdens themselves over Jerusalem are going to be cut into pieces. So not a good thing to be coming against Israel. Now, knowing that the John Kerry just went over again yesterday to start up these peace talks again and he's been traveling around different areas but he went back to Israel yesterday or the day before and now they're starting to try to to bring it all together again so John Kerry goes over there and what does he do obviously he's working to try to divide up Israel 
That's the, that's the agenda from the Obama administration. So he's over there, he goes over there, and look what happens. There is the headline, the cold snap felt across the western half of the nation. And there's a, a big article about this. Let me go over to that article. It should be big enough for you to see. It says, a wintery storm pushing through the western half of the country is bringing bitter cold temperatures that prompted safety warnings for residents in the Rockies and threatened crops as far as south as California. There's, there's some more information about this, but the, the Arctic drop, and I'm going to show you a, uh, a map of what's taking place here, but we see this drop, and you'll see the temperatures by 20 to 40 degrees below the normal levels. And this happened right at the same time that John Kerry lands in, the, uh, in Israel. So let me go back. Now this is December the 4th. Carry lands. Keep in mind now, Israel is, they're a day ahead of us. So right now it would be the fifth, but John Kerry landed and, you know, on, the, on this day in the article coming out of the, uh, the Middle East, you'll see this is the Jewish press, Kerry riding a, load, a loaded freight train to run over Israel. The Obama administration is preparing a knife Israel in the back by forcing it to accept concessions on land and security to keep the Palestinian Authority happy. So what we have here is Kerry, the representative of the United States under Barack Obama, they have been cursed. And as he goes over there, what happens to America again? Well, they get hit with this massive cold Arctic storm and it is causing havoc in much of the United States, many, many of the states in the United States. And if you go and watch ABC News tonight, they'll show you the news, the weather news, and they'll show you how bad it is. Now, what I wanted to do is I, I have a video here. Let me play a little bit of that. It shows you how the United States was being inundated just prior to carry landing and when he landed this ice uh, this ice storm this massive arctic blast just took over much of the united states this is a special report from the abc news I'm Dan, I'm Dan Kepler in New York for this ABC News Digital Special Report. Mother, Mother Nature, Nature serving up a recipe for trouble as we are heading into this Thanksgiving holiday. Rain, rain sleet, snow, and gathering storm moving across the nation. Planes, trains, automobiles, everyone affected. Millions of Americans in the path, homeward bound, and they may have to come up with a plan B. ABC's Wendy Gillette joins us now live with more. Wendy, this timing obviously could be worse. Yeah, it could not be worse for the more than 43 million Americans who AAA estimates will travel this Thanksgiving Day holiday. Already hundreds of planes have been canceled or delayed, and the storm is still marching east. A massive storm system is on a collision course with holiday travelers, and it's already upending plans for getting around as Thanksgiving approaches. The driver in this Oklahoma wreck was unhurt, but the slick mixture of snow, sleet, and freezing rain is threatening to make for a treacherous holiday trek. It's dangerous, really dangerous right now. Accidents all over the here. People bumping into each other just from the snow. Just can't, can't stop, stop, I guess. The, the rough, rough weather, weather is blamed for at least a dozen deaths, mostly in road, road accidents. Violent wind and sleet battered the Albuquerque area. area. A lot of snow, a lot of ice. The road had been plowed. It's slick. I mean, it's, it's there's a lot of snow on top of ice that's just being, you know, packed on the more parts of the rain. Ice is the gremlin in the skies, too. At Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, the icing becomes a matter of life and death. Flight, Flight delays, delays promise travel backups heading east. In, in western New York, York freezing waters became a frigid trap for a hunter who got caught up to his waist. It took a hovercraft and a helicopter to pull him to safety. And in Oklahoma, the weather... All right, I'm going to stop it there. And uh, that video is a, uh, about seven, a little over seven minutes long, and it can give you a good synapse about the weather, how it started, and it's still impacting the United States. 
So, and again, this happening at a time where John Kerry just starts up again the process, and it happens every single time. And if you don't believe what I'm telling you, please read my book. You'll see the dates. You'll see <clears throat> not only the dates that the people, the leaders of the countries did what they did against Israel. You'll see the events that came immediately after or just prior to and after them coming against the nation of Israel. Now, I told you I would show you this map. I want to blow this map up a little bit for you. And you can see how when Kerry landed, all of a sudden the United States goes minus. I mean, I'm talking cold. Look at this. Look at these temperatures minus even into Texas. Uh, and in California, where they're worried about, as you can see from the, the article, crops being destroyed because it's so cold that, especially in California, where it's one of the largest agriculture producers in the United States, it's wrecking uh, crops. So, again, we see the hand of God being played out on a nation that is coming against Israel in the point of... Uh, two of the scriptures. Number one, they've been burning, burning themselves over Jerusalem. They want to give, the United States wants to give East Jerusalem over to the Palestinians. And they want to divide Israel into two, to have a two-state solution. And when you do that, you're going against God in two verses, and you place, the obviously, in the third verse, you place the curse on that nation. So America... You, need, you really need to be praying that Barack Obama would completely support the Jewish people and the Jewish nation. Because when you do that, you're obeying God. And when you don't obey God, get ready for the curse. Get ready for even worse things that take in place. I mean, who knows what he's going to do. Massive earthquake, rain, flood, uh, who knows. But it's all, it always comes when you come against the nation of Israel. Now, here's another prophecy sign concerning the rebuilt Jewish temple. And I showed you from the scriptures that the covenant, I put it up again. I give you three different verses there where the Lord talks about the temple being rebuilt, a man of Christ, or the man of sin going into the temple. You'll see that this is where the Temple Mount area is. And there was an article that came out again that the Temple Mount shut after fireworks shot at the cops. Now, I've been telling you in my broadcast to watch the Temple Mount area because little by little, Israel is uh, being forced to deal with the Muslims at the Temple Mount. They've been very, very harsh to the Jews who've been wanting to go up to uh, pray and to do what they do for the religious rites on the, this holy ground area for the Jews. But the, the people who run it, the wasp, and you'll see that in this in an article if you read it, that the uh, the Jews <clears throat> are kept away by these people, and they're called the the wet. And they what they do is they are monitoring what's going up on the Temple Mount. And what I mean by monitoring, I mean if they see some Jew go up there, and they see him bow down, they immediately rush in on him because they don't want anybody praying up there that is not Muslim. And so it's really caused many, many problems, but you have to look at it this way. Eventually, eventually, and it's the, the Israeli government, and I mentioned this in my video yesterday as well, the Israeli government now has people of high places in the government who are working to get the Jews full access on this Temple Mount area. And we know that it, it will happen because there's a third temple that will be built because we see that in the scriptures. And it's 100% clad, iron tight, shut. It's going to happen. And what I'm trying to do in my ministry is just to warn the people so that when they see it happen, they don't get all upset. Uh, they should just have expected it to happen because it's the word of the Lord coming to fruition. Now, there's another prophecy. <clears throat> You'll see the flashing prophecy sign there. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. Masonic prophecy. 
Somebody wrote to me and asked, is this a Masonic prophecy? prophecy? Yes, it is. And what we know is that Zechariah 12, 10 reads like this. It says, And that were pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication, and they will look on me and the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for his firstborn son. And what this is, this was a prophecy about when Jesus Christ comes back, that the Jews who did not receive Jesus Christ, when they look upon him and they see the one that was pierced, because obviously what happened to Jesus? He was pierced in his hands and his feet for all of us. Not just the Jews, but for anyone who would receive the message of salvation from Christ. Now, we know that the Jews, uh, most of the Jews, do not believe in Jesus Christ. And there's a movement growing, obviously. There is a movement growing in Israel, which is fantastic. And there's a lot of uh, Jews now that are being... Uh, driven, and I believe it's the Holy Spirit, encourage them to go out to share their faith, even though they're Jews, Jews for Jesus, that have turned their life over to Christ, and now they're going out. And this is what this story is all about. You'll see it here, headline, Yoshia campaign causes buzz in southern Israel. Now, when you read this article, I'm not going to go there to it, there's a link, but when you read the article, you're going to find out that there's a rabbi, one of these important rabbis. He was on a radio show with one of the people who are a born-again Jew. And it, he, this rabbi was just livid. When you look at what the rabbi was doing, you could see the similar fashions to what Islam, one of the leaders of the Islam, one of these imams would believe. Uh, if somebody were to go on a show with him and say, Jesus Christ is God the Father, you know, and or when you talk about the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're all one. There's not three gods, but there's one. The the imams will go crazy, and this is what happened with this rabbi. And when I read the story, I had a picture in my mind of Paul, the Apostle Paul, before he was converted. How he hated to hear the this the way. About And what I mean by the way is the, the way of this new sect that was coming, and this new sect obviously was uh, Christians being born again from faith in Jesus Christ. And so it was almost the same kind of deal in this article. But the bottom line is this. We do see that there's good news in Israel, and people are listening and people are receiving the Messiah. And I think that it's perfect timing. I really do. I believe that there's a movement that's growing in Israel just before the rapture of the church. And I believe that with all of these signs coming, the, the talk about peace and safety, we see them going to Rome for talks. And I do cover other information in my book about Rome, what's going on in Rome in relation to Israel. Very fascinating information, and I pray that you would take time to read it. So there's definitely a buzz going on in southern Israel, and you should read that entire article. Now, one of the other prophecies uh, that Christ pointed out to us was what? The shaking, earthquakes, in many places. You'll see not only in many places, but great earthquakes, these big earthquakes. So get ready for even more of the big quakes. Now, I'm not a prophet. I can't tell you the day that they're coming. But I can tell you this, I can point to Jesus Christ's words. And if he says to get ready for the big quakes or these great quakes as you see in Luke 21, 11, get ready for it because they're coming. And we're seeing many quakes in divers places. And this is what we see in Matthew chapter 24, verse 7. So there is a, a one of the other earthquakes, and you'll see what I posted, a 5 point or 7.5 earthquake again today in the philippines now the philippines have been rocked last month they had a 7.2 earthquake then they were slammed with this with this typhoon that just wrecked m much of the philippines it was horrendous what it took place there and then again philippines uh, the uh, there was not only was there a, an earthquake 
uh, from that 7.2, then the typhoon, but now they got struck with another another earthquake. You'll see it here. Officials tell the news that a 5.5 magnitude Philippines earthquake that hit just after 7.58 uh, a.m. local time on December the 4th, which is today. So in different places, but keep in mind, these are just parts of prophecy, different sections of prophecies. But the Lord told us in his word, when you shall see all these things, know that it's near, even at the door. So I don't have time to show you everything that's going on in the world in one day. And that's where you can get my book, right? You get my book. Read the book right online today for free. All of this information's in there, and it will give you a really clear picture of what's going on. So also we know that one of the other signs is the sign of pestilence. Now I've been telling you about watching the news about mutating diseases. I talked a little bit about this yesterday because there's been another college who had more outbreaks of meningitis and last night's news, the local news where I'm living, showed that there was another case of meningitis at the university. So these things are taking place. Now the Mars virus we had another one of those cases. This is one of these very, very deadly viruses, and there was more news about somebody contracting this. And any time that you see this kind of news about these Mars viruses, people worry about the pandemic that a lot of people have been saying that it's coming, it's coming. But I can tell you for sure that it one will come, a disease will come, or many, many diseases, and the max of these diseases will be felt in the tribulation period. Now, another one of the things that the Lord talked about in the last days is the Christians were going to be persecuted. We see a lot of that going on, and there was some more news about it today, that the terrorists murdered 70 Christians again today. And so not only do we read the news about these things going on, and especially in the Middle East, but even here in the United States, we see a movement that is heading in the wrong direction for Christianity. We see a movement of, you can't even say Merry Christmas to some people without getting sued or you know having somebody come against you. Try going into a store and say Merry Christmas to the shopper or to Merry Christmas to one of the people that are working there. A lot of the stores, they've given orders for the people don't, you can't say Merry Christmas to them. This is the road that not only America is on, but we're becoming a godless nation, just like many of the other nations have already or become. So going down, what is good news now, I got a, a letter, one of the people in Africa, he is in Nakuru, Africa. His name is John, and he is a blessing to me. And they asked that they would receive my books. And let me show you, I'm going to put down right here, when you go to my site, you'll be able to read the letter. But what I wanted to point to you in highlight, in red, as you can see, now, what I sent to him was this right here. You'll see my books. Now, what is really interesting here, take a look at this. I keep these in my wallet. I walk around with these things in my wallet, right? So when I witness to somebody, I'll take it out and I'll give it to them. And I've had many people look at me like I was going to give them a credit card. They were, they were stunned to see that this little deal here has my complete book on it. Not only does it have my book on it, but it also has the entire Bible on it. And it also has a video that I put up about salvation, about the call to salvation of Jesus Christ. After they read the book, if they want to make a, uh, a commitment to Christ, it would be on there. So this is what he got. And he told me that he had a dream that in this dream that he had people distributing these cards that look like credit cards. You'll see this on here. And when he got this, he looked at this and in his, in his writings, he says, when I received your books and the small CDs, I knelt down and prayed. And I think the small CDs is what I was seeing in his dream. So I don't know if it is or not. All I know is, is a coincidence that it looks like it could be a credit card. When you pull it out, it's just a disc. It'll fit on the round one. 
and I've been sending many, many of these things overseas, and it's been truly a blessing for those people to be able to read not only my book, but to be able to read the Bible if they can't afford it by going to the desk. So this is a picture of John. He is a Nukuru. This is what I just a picture of what I had sent to him. So you get an idea when you read the email from him when he was talking about God had showed him that that people were going to be passing out these what it looked like these credit cards and they certainly do look like the credit card and I would be blessed if it turned out to be that that was the fulfillment of his dream and that the Lord showed him what was going to happen but anyway John's information is up there if you'd like to email John or call John and encourage him he's out there they're giving a uh, one of the reasons why he wrote this is because they are getting ready for a, a crusade and he wanted some information so that he'd be able to pass out and that's what I did that's what this ministry is all about I give it to him free mail it to him free and I get blessed knowing that I'm doing the work of the Lord and it's spreading like wildfire especially in Africa so if you want to uh, encourage him there's that information and please pray for my ministry I'm sending my last 16, I have 32 books left, and I'm, I just got uh, the email I'm sending out. I have two places, two different places in Kenya that will be getting 16 books apiece so that they can start Bible studies with the books. And I'm out of books, except for my little CDs. And it takes money to do that, and I'm just asking just pray that the Lord provide because I always thought in my heart when the Lord stops providing and I can't get the books out that he wanted me to get out, I'll know that it's, it's time to end the ministry. The Lord has never failed me and all I do is I give a, I give a call. This is a need and if people meet the need, that's between them and Jesus Christ. So the information is right there take it for what it's worth read my book for free today by going to my website and pray for the ministry that other people like John would be able to read the book and read the Bible today for free now if you have any questions email me at fjdemora at gmail.com and I'll do my best to get back to you God bless you all Keep looking up because the Lord is coming back and he's coming back soon. See you later.